Good morning and welcome to Inside Tennessee. I'm your moderator along with my colleague John North. I'm John Becker and we're pleased to have you with us. We're hoping you're having a good start to the new year and enjoyed the prediction show last week. John, a ratings winner. Solid. I heard solid. From people all across the nation about that show. <laughs> it's a fun one. If you haven't seen it, you can go to our website and check it out. This week we are focused on a new poll that is out this week. This is the third this year from the Beacon Center. Joining us to break it down is Mark Cunningham and a lot of folks haven't seen the numbers here, but we're going to lay them out for you on this Sunday morning. Mark, great to see you as always. The Beacon Center nonprofit, nonpartisan and independent group. Let's explain why you started doing polling as uh, center. Yeah, ultimately, there's not really an unbiased, you know, factually good poll that's across the state. So we want to see where Tennesseans really stood on the issues. And ultimately, there's a real lack of good polling in the state. So, you know, we thought this is a great chance for us to fill the void. And, you know, we've been really successful so far. Uh, we have a really good sample size, our good demographic information. And we really want to show you know, the citizens of Tennessee, where they actually stand on the issues and not, you know, hear talking heads tell us where they stand on the issues. Let's get to one of the big headlines from this poll, and that is how the Democratic lineup shakes out in the coming election. Among the candidates, who would you most likely vote for in the Democratic primary for Senate in 2024? You see Gloria Johnson with a commanding lead there. She's a Knoxville Democrat representative in the state legislature right now. John, what stood out to you? And then we'll ask Mark. I was surprised, I think, at, at the dominance, as you've indicated, so clearly for uh, Gloria Johnson, of course, an Oxford representative over Marquita Bradshaw. I thought maybe she'd have a little bit more name recognition still left over. That is not the case. Uh, Gloria came out strong in the spring, has been going that way for months and months, getting her message out. So it, it arguably is going to be hard, even though Bradshaw has filed to be a candidate in 24 for her to sort of get back in. What does this poll say to you, Mark? Well, I agree with John's points, first of all. Secondly, um, it's just, no matter how you slice it, it's great news for Gloria Johnson. Essentially, Mark Guida Bradshaw have to win about four out of every five undecided voters in order to win. Um, so ultimately, it's very clear that her spending and her ads have worked. Now, granted, I want to make clear that it's a very small sample size, and there's a lot of undecided voters. And you know, the way that the primary votes can change, where people are allowed to vote in whatever primary they want. Um, I would say that Gloria Johnson is in great shape, but it is not over over yet. Marquita Bradshaw still has a lot of time. And again, these undecided voters, who knows what they're looking for? Do they want a more electable candidate? Are they not sure on the candidate yet? Do they like them both? Do they not like them both? There's a lot of questions, but Gloria Johnson's got to feel really good about these results. Another polling question that's going to grab a lot of attention is the next one, and that has to do with education savings accounts. Do you call them vouchers? Whatever you call them. This poll says a wide majority of people in Tennessee support them. You see the question on your screen there. This is on the heels of Governor Bill Lee's proposal to expand the voucher plan, not just for a couple of cities in Tennessee, but for all of the state. 68% support. Mark, let's start with you, and then we'll get to John's questions about this. What does it say to you, that margin? Well, a couple of things. I mean, it's it's basically unchanged from the poll we did about six months ago. So things have basically stayed the same. People still want educational choice. What's interesting is that support has gone up pretty substantially among Republicans and among Democrats and independents actually gone down a little bit. Now, it's still a wide, you know, a large majority from a 56 percent Democrats, 56 percent independents, but 85 percent of Republicans in the state now support ESA statewide. So it, it's a it's a winning issue right now for the governor. Mark, let me play devil's advocate for just a minute in terms of the phrasing the presentation of the question and I'm glad that you guys asked it again and it'll be interesting to see how it develops in the coming months but I wonder I mean the notion I think if you asked any sort of average Tennessean do you think this sort of opportunity should be expanded they might say if you present it that way well yeah I think everybody ought to, ought to have that shot but what I wondered is this uh, and you didn't ask it this way, it's probably too late now. What if you sort of uh, asked people if you were able to define it by income? What is your income? Find out what their income was in terms of a response. Or if you said, uh, what would you think about people, say, 100000 earning $100,000 or more o and over getting this benefit versus somebody who's like 50 k and under? You know what I'm saying? I wonder if you, if you could split it out in terms of income, what kind of a response you might get. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, ultimately, I think that, you know, this is the general proposal. So you're right, when you get more specific, the numbers are going to change a little bit. You're like, oh, if it's under 100,000, actually might be a higher percentage that approve of it. Uh, but the general concept, and we made sure to include private schools and, you know, even adding Governor Lee's support to the question, we thought that might lower it a little bit. And it really stayed about the same. It, I think it moved about three points in favor of people more against uh, educational choice. But I think there's a lot of ways you can ask the question. Ultimately, we thought it was a fair way and we felt like the results were, you know, very very similar to what we saw a few months ago. Piggybacking on that, Mark, you ask, will this impact your feeling on your lawmaker? Let's move to that next question. Would you be more or less likely to vote for your legislator if they support expanding education savings accounts across Tennessee? And you see the number there, 52% more likely to vote for them. This is key because the legislature will be voting on this, no doubt, in the coming session. Mark, what should we read from this graphic? There's a sizable percentage of people who might be for education savings account, but it won't affect their vote. You can see 28% there. But 52% is a is a really, really big number. And, you know, legislators on the fence are going to look at it and say, well, if this could affect my reelection. Uh, on the other side, you know, 11% saying they would be less likely to vote for them. That's not, I mean, you do have to worry about that as well. But it seems like the people who support this really care about it. The people who oppose it also really care about it. Um, but if I was a legislator, I would look at it and say, you know what, people are really for this. Now, who knows? they actually change their vote in the voting booth, but it's something to definitely keep an eye on. Mark Cunningham will be back with more of our conversation about the Beacon Center poll that is just out this week. More of that, including the presidential race, will be back right after this.